Sometimes you need to leave a render overnight to do its thing. It's something I do all the time. Or maybe you have a ton of different shots within a sequence. They're spread across various scenes in a blend file, or maybe they're even spread into a bunch of different blend files. Staying organized can be a challenge. Today I'm talking about one of my new favorite Blender add-ons that not only automates all of this, but also helps me keep organized, even when I'm spread out across multiple scenes or blend files. The add-on is called Blender Cube, and I'll be covering what exactly makes it the best way to keep your shots organized in Blender. We have a few options for staying organized. One thing you could do, let's say you have a complex series of shots, is you could use the bind camera to keyframe functionality. What I mean by that is, let's say we have this dancing person and for the first 100 frames, we're looking through this camera. Okay, so let's let's just look at our camera animation for those 100 frames. So we're kind of zooming in. And then on frame 100, we want to cut to a, a close-up shot. Okay, so we could do that. Let's start by adding a second, second camera. So let's duplicate this one. In this second camera, let's set the focal length to something like 85. And in that camera, let's go to our camera view here. And let's set this up, maybe something like that, okay? So this is camera one. And, and by the way, I'm switching them in the outliner right now. Just click on the little camera icon. I know my face is in the way. So this is camera one. And at frame 100, we wanna to switch to camera two. That's very easy to do in Blender. Just start by selecting camera number one, go to keyframe one. And with that selected, hit control B and that will bind camera one to that keyframe. On frame 100, go to the next camera and hit control B and bind that one. Of course, I didn't realize uh, we had animation on that camera, so now let's set that up again. Okay, so now if we watch through this, through the eyes of our camera, we're in camera one, and on frame 100, we switch to camera two. This is kind of the basics of shot organization in Blender. This is one way you could get started with it. You can switch between cameras, but let's say we had a different shot where we're not just doing this dancing animation, but we want to load in uh, a separate animation of break dancing. With this camera switching, we, we could make that happen. Maybe at frame 100, we animate the visibility of this character. So we come over here, we turn this on, uh, let's select this object that we have here. And on frame number 99, we can keyframe by pressing I, this is visible. Okay, and then on frame num number 100, this is not visible. And we would have to do the same for this object. So not visible, go back to frame 99 and visible. So now we're dancing, we're in camera number one, we switch to camera number two, and the armature is still there, but the character is not there, right? If we got rid of the, the overlays. So that's one way you could do things. You could animate visibility. You can animate in the visibility of the second character. There's all sorts of stuff you could do. The problem with this approach is it's very flawed um, as you get into more complex shots. I'm just backing up with Control-Z. The problem is, if we're rendering, this isn't very optimized. The reason for that is, let's say, shot number one, we have a ton of objects that we have the, the visibility animated on. They're visible for shot number one. When we get num to frame number 100 for shot number two, we switch cameras, we animate the visibility of those items, and we animate in the visibility of new items. When Blender loads your scene into the GPU memory, especially if you have something like persistent data turned on, which helps your renderings be more efficient, the problem with that is it's gonna load everything into the render, into the, the GPU memory for render time. You can check that by right-clicking here and saying, show me my video memory. Okay, so right now we're using five gigabytes out of my 10 gigabyte GPU. And that's because we're in render view right now. Um, if I were to have persistent data on and I were to start loading things up into a scene, obviously this is a very simple scene, but it starts to eat up more and more GPU memory until you run out of memory. So this particular approach may work for very simple scenarios, but as soon as you get more advanced, then you need to take a slightly different approach. The next step up is you utilize Blender scene files. If you haven't used the scenes here in Blender, it's very powerful. What I could do is let's say we have my first animating person here. I could come up here and I could say, make a full copy. Okay, this is gonna make a full copy of my scene. So now I'm working in a totally new scene. And in this scene, 
let's just let's get rid of these uh, bind camera to markers, okay? And let's also go back to the original scene and get rid of these. In scene number one, I just want to have camera number one, all right? And I want that to last for 100 frames. In scene number two, I also want that to last for 100 frames, but I only want the second camera. So let's get rid of the first camera. So I'm gonna start and only be viewing from this second camera. And I also want to switch the type of animation that we have. So let's just get rid of this character. Actually, before I do that, I wanna copy the materials. Let's bring in our second second character. This one's gonna be breakdancing, okay? And what I'm gonna do before I delete this character is I'm just gonna link the materials that I have here, just cause I wanna reuse those. And now let's, let's get rid of our original character, delete that from the scene. And for this second shot, we are focused on this character and this little breakdance routine. The camera will stay stationary, all right? So that is our second shot. Notice how I didn't have to animate any visibility. Shot number one, we have this dancing, we have our original camera animation. Shot number two, we've switched to our new breakdance animation and everything is as expected. We don't have to bind any cameras to keyframes. This is great. Also, when we render this out, it's only accounting for what's in the current scene. We don't have to account for all of the stuff that is hidden with visibility. The downside is where we had everything set up in one shot before, we could just render. So if we needed to leave it rendering overnight, for instance, we could just let it go and it would go through everything. It may not be the most optimized with, with GPU memory, but it would render through everything. The problem with this setup is now we have to go to scene one, render scene one, go to scene two, render scene two, and that's just more babysitting. And nobody wants to babysit their computer while computers are supposed to be here to help us not work as much, right? They're supposed to help us be more efficient. So nobody wants to babysit it. That is where an add-on comes in that I wanna talk about today. This is a very powerful add-on uh, called Blender Q. You can get it over at the link in the description where the developer has been nice enough to give us 25% off. I, I am an affiliate for this add-on, but I wouldn't be an affiliate if I didn't use it and believe in it. So let's let's start to look at Blender Q and what it can do for us. First things first, let me just rename these scenes so it's a little bit more clear. Let's name this one one and this one two, all right? So we wanna render through both scenes and we don't wanna reboot renderings and manage all the settings and all of that. So we can do that very easily with Blender Q. So after you have it enabled, go to the add-ons or go to the end panel and we have Blender Q. What's really cool about Blender Q is this lineup, this queue of renderings that I have set up isn't attached to a particular blend file. So for example, this is a totally separate project I was working on for a client where I have these 11 shots of a product. And if I wanted, I could actually start rendering those 11 shots from a totally different blend file, which is where I am right now. So what we can do is let's open up this dropdown, let's disable the old project I was working on, and let's create a new project called Dance. Once we have that created, we can start adding scenes to our render queue, which is awesome. Let's just add a current scene. Uh, it wants me to save the blend file first, so let's just save it. Let's call it Dance. Okay, so we can add the current scene, which is our scene file number one. So that's showing us our blend file and our scene file. Let's go to shot number two and add this scene. So now we have number one and number two. Right now I could just render these out. Let me show you how much control you have over this though. This is, this is really good. So from anywhere, you can come down to render settings and we can change the render settings of both those scenes. Right now it's set to the default 4096. That's too much for me right now. Let's set it to 32. Let's say I'm doing like just a sample rendering for a client. You can also change the resolution. So let's change this to 50% because it's just a sample. Um, we could change the render engine. So for this Play Blast, maybe I just want to do my workbench engine, which uh, samples are no longer relevant, but the resolution is. We can also change the start and end frame as well as where this renders out to. So let's just create a new folder on my desktop called Dance. Let's create new folders for shot one and two. Number one will go there. Number two will go in the same folder, dance, shot number two. We can change the output format. Now keep in mind my, my display resolution is set to be much larger because I'm doing a tutorial. Usually this would all be visible just at a glance. 
but we could change this to EXR. Uh, and anytime you change something from the default value of your scene file, you'll have this little arrow that will let you revert back to the default, whatever that may be. So that's, that's really useful. You can at a glance, change a lot of settings, and we can have even more settings than this, which I'll show you in a, in a moment. But let's just start here. Let's save the changes. Uh, let's go out of render view so we don't interfere with the rendering. And just like that, we can press batch render. It'll ask us if we want to save our scene. And I'm just doing a play blast, so things are, are pretty quick. And it's going to render out those, those frame sequences. That was really easy. Once it renders it out, it adds this green check mark next to it, which just lets you know this has been done. If I were to abandon a rendering halfway through, so let's just, let's uncheck this to let it know, hey, I want to render this again. And it's only going to render the one scene instead of both of them over again, because I only have one unchecked. If I were to quit this, so if I were to hit escape halfway through, what happens is it gives this partial green check mark. And that's just letting us know uh, this was abandoned. Do you want to keep rendering from where you were at? We could just batch render and it will automatically keep rendering from wherever you left off. Once it's done, it'll have the green check mark. You can delete things. You can reactivate things. You can change the settings. Um, so let's say this was for a client. We sent our play blast. Uh, both of them got approved. Client was really happy. We could then go to our render settings. We could change to cycles for a final rendering. We could change to 100% again. And we could just render on top of the old frames. So let's say I already brought those frames for the play blast into DaVinci Resolve and I started editing things with the play blast. Uh, then when we replace the frames, we can choose the location. We can leave it unchanged and we'll, it'll render over the top of our old frames. And then we go back to DaVinci and we have cycles fully rendered in our timeline without making any more imports or changes. So I hope, I hope you can see how this is starting to be really useful, but I wanted to show you a few more features in Blender Q. So let's go to Blender Q and under the drop down here, we can expand it and we have more things that we can activate. For example, we could have persistent data. We could turn on or off our compositing nodes, resolution, frame rate, even um, render output path, motion blur, film transparency, tiling. These are all things you could just turn on to have ultimate control over your renderings. Now, if I go to the render settings, you could see we could turn on motion blur. If it's on in the scene, that'll remain on, but this is a way to toggle it on and off. We can turn on film transparency, which just makes a transparent environment, persistent data. Um, one thing about this is it's been implemented in the right way. So when you use persistent data, it takes all your built uh, cycles render data and it commits it to the GPU memory. The good thing about that is it doesn't have to think about it every time it renders a new frame. It keeps everything in memory. If this was implemented poorly, then what would happen is it would take everything into memory for render one, and then it would keep that in memory for render two, and it would pile up and your system would just run out of GPU memory. Instead, the developers spent a lot of time making this polished. So it'll render number one, it'll dump all of the stuff from the GPU memory when it's done rendering number one, and then it'll start num render number two. So it's very optimized. Um, I have definitely put it through its paces with larger client projects, as you kind of saw a glimpse at with my 11 shots. So yeah, this is very, very powerful, very quick way to stay organized. And like I said, the link for the product is in the description. I am an affiliate, so you help me out by following the link. But yeah, bottom line is I would not be an affiliate. I would not ask to be an affiliate if I didn't believe in this product and I do. So that's why I asked. So not only can you set up a queue of renderings from various scenes within a single blend file, you can set up renderings from different blend files. I could add this current blend file, go to a different blend file, add that one. And then from anywhere, I can queue up the renderings of my various different blend files. So if you have shots that are contained within separate blend files, this is a great way to keep organized. Uh, another just little thing is because you're supporting this directly, you're supporting the developer at blenderq.com. The nice thing about that is uh, your money is not going to a third party marketplace. I think marketplaces play a role in helping people get access to tools that they wouldn't hear about otherwise. But any chance I get to support a creator directly, I definitely will. And this is one of those opportunities. The one gripe I have against marketplaces is they can change their percentages at any time. So you have developers that have spent time building their tools for a particular platform, 
And then overnight, that marketplace says, nah, instead of taking, I don't know, 10%, I'm going to take 30%. And just like that, the developer loses a huge chunk of their income just because this marketplace needs to have higher income, higher profits. And it's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of a gross thing. So I enjoy supporting developers directly wherever I can. Um, so yeah, follow the link. It'll take you to a special link at blenderq.com where you'll get 25% off. And there are other tools planned from this developer that will continue to streamline our rendering pipeline in Blender. This is just the first step. So I'm really excited to see where he's going with this. This is why I've decided to support it and make a video showing, showing you the tool because uh, I think it'll be really useful for you. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Ooh, just a little bonus uh, while you're here, while I have you here. By the way, if you want to speed up your renderings in Blender, come over to where you're doing your denoising and set this to use GPU. If you're using compositing, you can also come down here to the performance compositor and use GPU as well. I would do that for both my scenes. Uh, and that's just going to speed up if you're denoising, if you're using the compositor and you have a good GPU. That'll just speed things up significantly. I just threw this in while I was thinking about it um, last minute. Anyway, thanks. Mm -hmm.